right, so right now, I got these book match pieces of mahogany that I'm gonna make the sides of the guitar out of. Now, I've already jointed these on one side so they're nice and flat. They are book matched, if you can see that nicely on there. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put these through my thickness sander. My finish thickness on these, when I'm done with the guitar, I want right around two millimeters. Now, I've read, again, I'm not a luthier, but I've read, anywhere from 1.6 mil to 2.3 mil, something like that, is, a, is an acceptable side. It really determines, I think, some of the tone and everything. And obviously the thinner you go, the more um, you know, cross bracing you might need on that inside to just give it a little bit more strength and rigidity. So I'm gonna take these down to just over two mil, so that way when I do all my finished sanding and everything, I'm right in that two mil range. So let's keep this on the thickness sander. Let's see what we can do. Okay, so I put these through the thickness sander a number of times, take off just a little bit at a time. Got them down to around just over two mil. If you can see that, I got about, yep, yeah, I thought I hit it, 2.3 mil in thickness. Again, when I'm finished, when I'm done with all my finished sanding and everything, I want these right around two mil for, uh, I think, probably some good quality sound. So. The next step is going to be to get the uh, steam box set up and steam bend these, get them put in a jig, and let those sit for a while in there. So we'll get that stuff set up and be right back. All right, well, I'm getting ready to steam bend my sides. You'll see behind me this steam box I made. There's a lot of videos online. I did not do one. And you will see through this guitar process that I have a lot of jigs that I made with the first guitar that I created. So... Uh, a lot of these jigs and stuff that you'll see that I don't necessarily show videos how to make those jigs. There's a lot of videos out there. I just didn't happen to think that I was going to do this again, but I enjoyed it so much that now I'm using all my jigs. So apologize for that. So if I can think of it as I'm going through the uh, guitar setup, I'll kind of talk to the jigs a little bit. But anyways, this is a steam box. Uh, when you steam bend wood, real simple rule of thumb. Doesn't matter how wide the piece of wood is. For every inch of thickness, you need to steam it for about an hour. So these are right around eighth inch, just under. So every quarter inch is about 15 minutes of steam time. So about seven, eight minutes for that eighth inch. I like to go just a little bit more. So I'm probably gonna go around the eight to 10 minute mark um, with each one of these pieces. And uh, we'll take you over here. Gotta get that up to 200 degrees, it's heating now. I'm going to take the camera over here, get down here on the bench and show you. This is another jig I made. <clears throat> this happens to be the shape of the guitar that I created. Uh, these unbolt because it's easier to take this on and off. I learned that the hard way. <clears throat> but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a block of wood and I'm going to block it in right here at this center line. So when I put that first piece of wood in here, I'm going to bend it and I'm going to push it up to that. I'm gonna flex it around here and it'll be a little long on the butt side. I'll trim that off before I steam the other side and put it in here. So that'll just give me a good solid mark to start from. So let me get that block. We'll get it clamped in there. Wanna to try to get this in there as square as you can because this is basically going to be your center line for that guitar. So you wanna make sure that everything is nice and centered up. So as you start putting your body, your soundboard, your, your back plate, 
and everything on your guitar, you got to make sure that everything is nice and square. All your lines line up center lines and it's pretty critical. So I, I did learn. All right, so when that gets heated up, <clears throat> I'm going to go put one of these sides in there that we just got done uh, thickness sanding. Put it in there for uh, eight, ten minutes, somewhere around there. We'll take it out, wear some gloves because they're pretty hot, and uh, watch the steam. And uh, we'll put it in this form. All right, well, while we're waiting for this thing to heat up, I thought I'd just go through real, real quick. Uh, my steam box. This is the second one I made. The first one I made, uh, made right off one of the videos that you found on YouTube. Uh, the guy made it all out of pine. It was a good steam box. Made the first guitar with it, everything worked, worked good. Uh, but the pine really seemed to swell and uh, move a lot. So I went ahead and I got some uh, scraps from uh, work of this plywood. This is called an MDO plywood. It's actually a marine grade plywood. A lot more stable. This is the first time I'm using it, so I'm hoping it works good. <laughs> Basically, meat thermometer that you see here, I got it set at 200, so I know when it's at 200, I can uh, put the piece of wood in and start timing it. It's got a couple of vent holes on top of it. I made mine about five foot long, just if I wanted to bend some other items other than just guitar parts. Um, and it's about six inches wide, about eight inches tall. Inside, and I can show you, it's not really heating up just yet. I've got a number of these bars about six inches apart that hold the piece of wood up in the air so all the steam gets all around it. See, basically, the meat thermometer just sticks in the door. Uh, I used two clamps on this one. On my first one, uh, I used one, and the door would swell and uh, leak a lot of steam that way, too. So this one, I went ahead and put two on there. Now, you do have to keep in mind that this thing gets under pressure, so you want to make sure that you have the appropriate vent holes um, if the steam can't vent out enough, uh, you could uh, get yourself in a little bit of trouble, I suppose. So, and hopefully we don't see that on this video. All right, well, I got that out of there. It was in there about 10 minutes or so, because it's still pretty warm or cool, I should say, here in Michigan. So I'm gonna flex this thing in here. This is where you just gotta kind of work with it. use some clamps here to help me out. These, by the way, are some of the best clamps I've ever purchased. <laughs> I don't know if you got to work, try to work really fast. I try to because, you know, obviously the wood's cooling. So again, these are some uh, jigs I made first go around. Just made them from some turnbuckles and some blocks of wood. Basically shaped them so I can put them in this block like so. All right, so I'll try to get you a little bit better angle on this. So you can see now, I have this in the jig. This is the butt end, and again, I'm gonna trim this off. You see here, this is the block I installed so that I butted this piece up to it. So I'm gonna let this piece stay in the jig for a day or so. Then I'll come back and I'll sweat the other one, uh, or steam the other one, I should say, and trim off the butt end of this, put it in this, let that sit for some time, and then we'll move on to the next steps. <laughs> 